But Thou art mighty, hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Feed me now and evermore. Open now the crystal fountain. the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hord, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, the person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. 
Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. <clears throat> the second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son of, into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy anniversary. Now, some of you know what I'm talking about, and some of you do not. Uh, but for those of you who may not be watching on the calendar, uh, it was this Sunday, one year ago, that we needed to close our doors for the first time. Let that sink in. 52 weeks of all this fun and crazy. And a lot has happened in that time. I mean, I know you know that. And I was trying to look and see what had happened. And I was Googling websites and I came across this very goofy website whose name I can't remember, but it had a bunch of ridiculous stuff that I don't know why anyone would care about, like who divorced who in Hollywood and stuff like that, that happened in 2020. But the one line that it had that I thought was just priceless said that emotionally speaking, 2020 lasted approximately 12 months and 487 years. And that feels really true to me. That is speaking to my truth. And on the one hand, it makes for um, sort of easy topics to draw upon from the perspective of sermonizing, right? There's a lot of material here. We can continually talk about, look at all the challenges we've overcome. And we have, right? I mean, there's a lot that has gone on. But I kind of feel like that can't be all that there is. There's a lot of ways we can look at life and it can either be about looking at all that has gone wrong, all that we have lost, looking at the, through the lens of loss and darkness and endings. Or we can look at life through the lens of what is yet to become, what is positive and what, where is the light? What are the beginnings? And it's not to diminish that there have been loss. It's just to decide which one is going to be what you carry. So what I'm excited about is that we have had a turn in the weather. And I was able to go out last week and go for a walk around my neighborhood. And it's a nice opportunity. It's something I genuinely prefer to do by myself. Um, it, I'm alone with my thoughts. And I just try, if you know how sort of particularly busy and insane my life is, it's my time to just 
stop and pay attention to what's going on around and be just sort of focused in on the present. And as I was walking around, what captured my eye were the buds on the trees. And that's when the whole idea of beginnings sort of came to me. Nature, I don't think the leaves and the trees and the buds and the flowers think to themselves, it's time to drive out the death of winter. No, it's time to begin to sprout. It's time to begin to grow. The leaves come into being. And in summer, the heat comes upon us. And even in fall, we don't necessarily think about it in terms of the end of the heat, but the leaves begin to fall. We don't usually say, oh, it's fall, the leaves, trees are dying, leaves are, fall, leaves are dying. The leaves begin to fall. Even winter is the beginning of our renewal. It's our rest and renewal period. It's the beginning of our year, our liturgical year. Nature is in a cycle of beginnings and God created it in that way. God gave us that constant hope for what is about to become. God did not say, you're going to always weep for what is lost. You are going to know and be able to look forward to what is to come. And it's that hope that I wanna spend some time with because I don't know how many of you read today's um, scripture and feel really uplifted. Um, everybody reads it a little bit differently. And my reading of it over the years has, uh, has originally been very heavy handed. It felt very much a condemnation of sorts, like people complained, so God killed them. And then if they stopped complaining, God saved them. And if you believe in Jesus, you are saved. If you don't believe, you are damned. And it seemed a very like line in the sand, you're good, you're bad, you're saved, you're not. And that's not that reading of it. If you're with me on that, maybe that's not how you read it. So I'm not trying to put that on you. But if that's your reading of it, it doesn't comport with the God of love and light. So for me, I tried to dig a little deeper in this spirit of understanding God from the perspective of beginnings and of hope. And I don't believe that this is all about what's going to happen after when we are, have moved on, shall we say. I think this is about our present. How are you living today? Are you embracing God in your life today? Because if you aren't, you are probably suffering and lonely and afraid. And if you have God in your life, does that mean you don't have suffering? No, but it means that it's easier and more bearable and we have that hope of what comes next. And how do I know this is true? Because I ask you to ask yourself right now, think about the 487 years that were 2020 and ask yourself, if you think they would have been worse if you didn't have God. Ask yourself, how would last year have been for you if you were not a person of faith? I know without question that God brought me through last year in a way never before could I imagine. I know that God does not only come to us through the sacraments and through the scripture, but God comes to us through community, through our love of one another. I know that I survived last year because of you. You were the light of Christ in my life. You were my inspiration of hope. And I don't believe you did that just for me. You did that for each other. You showed up in community, you worshiped, you prayed, you gave homage to the hope that life will move on, that we will begin again. That is your gift, that is your blessing you are the light of Christ in the world. Today, yesterday, 
tomorrow and forever. And that is your charge to share with others. And it's, it's a wonderful gift and it does come with a responsibility because where there is light, there is also dark. And there's always this, this battle. And what I have seen, and maybe you've seen it too, as we comfort ourselves in our home behind our screens, is some people have gotten a little emboldened with the anonymity of a screen, or maybe even over the phone or in the confines of their privacy of their own home, to share and behave perhaps in slightly less than Christ-inspired ways. Think to yourself, have I sat in judgment of other people that I don't even know? Have I said unkind words about people in the world without ever knowing their side of anything? Have I propagated unkind thoughts and unkind messages about other people through my Facebook or my Twitter or my whatever account? Have I been living into the light of Christ or have I been spreading darkness? Now, in case you're feeling a little judged in this moment, believe me, I'm not pointing at you without pointing back at me. I am on the daily praying for forgiveness. But it is in that asking for forgiveness that we are still embracing the light. That still is the belief that I can begin to be a better person, that I can begin to make more positive Christ-like choices in my life. Because the alternative becomes very akin to just waiting for things to end. And haven't we all done that? Haven't you all at some point said, when will this all end? And then it leads to when will winter end? When will summer end? When will these bills end? And realistically, if you think about that line of thinking, you are planning out all of your endings and think that through to its natural conclusion because there's one ending we're all gonna meet. And are any of us super in a hurry to plan our way to that? But if we embrace the beginning, that today is a charge of a new day, Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world. Christ came into the world to redeem the world. That is a beginning. If we embrace our light, if we stand in community with one another, if we spread that light to all whom we see, if we refuse to participate in the darkness and our life becomes about beginnings, we change the world. And it may be one person at a time, but I can tell you for a fact, you changed my life. Whoever feels like I'm pointing at you right now through this Zoom camera, you changed my life. And that's a gift. I guarantee you change the lives of others and that by doing so you inherently change yourself. When we leave today from this service, my hope is that you will embrace the light of God and of Christ in your life. My hope is that you will share that hope with others. My hope is that you will feel the love of everyone in your community because a year ago we closed our doors and today we worshiped with 15 people. Today, we began anew. My hope for you is that today you will begin anew. My hope for you is that you will continue to find hope in all that you do. But my friends, the most important thing as I leave here today is that I will hope. And I hope you will as well. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the de departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Fred Steffens, Lou, Kina, Luisa, and Eli Story, Will and Vicki Tarantino, and Lisa, Dan, Ryan, and Sarah Thompson. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID crisis. Michelle, Beverly, Vic, Allison, Catherine, Anna, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Brandy, Joey, 
John, Josh, Adam, Sarah, Sarah, Tori, Caitlin, John, Michelle, Ben, Barrett, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kai, Joseph, Amy, Becca, Brittany, Mike, Aiden, Kathy, and Nicole. We offer prayers for our military and their families, Anthony, Lucas, Anna Marie, Chandler, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Mike, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Ben, Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. Please, say, please pray the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, once again, when we are unable to consecrate the sacrament this morning, please join me in the following prayer, which acknowledges our dependence on the presence of Jesus in our lives. In union, O Lord, with the faithful people of your church, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Um, just a few announcements this morning. Um, first, uh, just a reminder that next Sunday on our 10 o'clock Zoom call is a communion service. So um, if you do not have the little communion kits and you're planning to sign in that way, instead of coming to the eight o'clock, then you'll want to come by and pick those up from the church. Um, we are open on Wednesday from 11 to one, someone will be there um, and we'll have, other, um, we'll have other times published and available. And if those times that we publish don't work for you, you can just let us know and we can arrange to meet you at the church at another time uh, to get you those communion kits. I also want to invite you, if you can, I know we, a lot of us stay on for coffee hour, but some tend to go because they have other things, um, and that's, that's fine. But if you can stay on today just for a little bit, um, as soon as the service concludes, what I'd like to do is just have a brief discussion about Holy Week. Um, I, the, the clergy and staff have been talking about what Holy Week is going to look like this year, and we just need your opinion. Um, it's hard to make decisions when we don't know where you guys are with some of this stuff. So if you could just stay on for a few minutes, I just want to kind of throw out the ideas that we have and kind of get a general feel for um, preferences from you. So I'd, I'd appreciate that help. Um, other announcements that we need to make this morning? Frank, did I get that covered? Go ahead. Yeah, look, I have, I have one. Sure. Uh, just a reminder that again, this year we're going to be having Easter lilies for the church. So um, um, as in past years, um, we you're welcome to order an Easter lily, but please have your orders in by March the 22nd. Um, each plant, uh, each lily will be, uh, will cost um, $30. Um, and of course we will recognize um, either a person, a loved one uh, who is no longer with us or in Thanksgiving for someone in, we'll recognize both you and your loved one in the bulletin. Uh, thanks for that reminder, um, because that will be used to decorate for our Easter service. So, and then after the 10 o'clock um, Easter service on Sunday, you'll be able to take your lilies home. All right, are there birthday prayers? You'll need to unmute yourself and say your name if you could, if you have a birthday coming up. Ann, it's Charlie. I'd like you to, yeah, my grandson Owen is going to be 10 on St. Patrick's Day this oh, week. Double digits, that's amazing. <laughs> 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 they did name them Patrick, huh? No, uh, Owen was a better choice, I think. <laughs> I agree completely. Anyone else have a birthday? Can we also pray for Michael's grandson, Rory, who turns two the day after St. Patrick's Day? Oh, so sweet. All right, Owen and Rory. Anyone else? 
All right, let us pray for Owen and Rory. Holy God, we just give you thanks um, for these young men that you have given to their families and to all of us. We thank you so much for their life, for the love that they're sharing, and the joy that they give to everybody who knows them. We pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their birthday. We pray this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness, and we just thank you so much for all that they mean to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How about wedding anniversaries? Does anybody have a wedding anniversary? You'll need to unmute yourself and say your name, please. Well, uh, this morning, Chris really startled me. She said, do you know whose anniversary, what the anniversary today is? Oh, yeah, I know. How do you know? <laughs> my, grand <laughs> my granddaughter got married last year, and she just made it. Um, ten, as it was, 10 people couldn't come to the wedding, but you know, they said they wouldn't make it, but they're already, they're still married. Chris and Nicole. Chris and Nicole. Definitely yep. Love to Sorry for the long speech. <laughs> so one year. Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. Excellent. Just as the pandemic was hitting. Yes. Was good timing on their part. It was. <laughs> All right, let's pray for Chris and Nicole. Holy God, we just thank you for Chris and Nicole and for the love that they share. We just thank you for their union, for their marriage, for their commitment to one another. We pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their anniversary. We pray that you would continue to draw them to one another, continue to deepen their, their bond. And we pray this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Well, the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.